Hello and welcome back to my channel What If Deku 2.0. Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off part 4 of our series. What if Deku was class 1A's senior? If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is Jace underscore is underscore dead from archive of our own. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. You sure you got everything? Yes, Hawks, I triple checked, Izuku chuckled a little. I feel like you just don't want me to leave. I don't. It's gonna be so boring without you here, especially to distract Maruko. Hey, he isn't distracting me, Hawks ignored her and patted his shoulder. Now be good for your mom and brother and keep me updated on dead body guy. Hawks. Who's dead body guy? I'll tell you later. Hawks. The two heroes laughed as the teen shouted at them. Okay, okay, but seriously, safe trips and you have our numbers, right? Yep, and you guys added me to that group chat. Hawks is going to annoy the SHT out of you, so feel free to mute it. If you mute me, I will find you. Izuku rolled his eyes. I seriously need to go though otherwise I'll miss the train, he hugged Hawks and high-fived Maruko. It was awesome working with you guys, thank you so much for taking me on. Of course. Make sure to brag about shooting me, very few can do that. He waved goodbye one more time before leaving and heading to the station. Midoriya household. Rabbit, I'm heading home. Dee 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 dee. Panda, aye. Panda, we got a surprise when you get here. Feral cat, who is we? Vet, Dabai, you do have a surprise, remember? Feral cat, in my defense, I think I've been blocking it out. Rabbit, are you okay? What's the surprise? Panda, Dabai's not ugly anymore. Rabbit, he was never ugly. Panda, gay gay homosexual. Rabbit, Shut up, Atoshi, I swear to God. Feral cat, this is doing wonders for my confidence. Panda, bet it's doing other things to- Vet, Hitoshi don't tease them too much. They'll have enough to deal with when Izuku gets home. Rabbit, what? Happened? Vet, nothing bad, honey, I promise. Your little brother is just following in your footsteps. Rabbit, Toshi, why would you do that I'm a terrible role model? Rabbit, I literally get hurt all the time. Panda, thank God mom's a nurse. Rabbit, I don't trust this or any of you. Feral cat, good. Rabbit, you're also on that list. What is your surprise? Feral cat, no three. Panda, bet Yaukchuk Fijatkals. Vet, don't worry, Dabai and Hitoshi are just play fighting in the living room. Rabbit, Okay, XD, I'll text the others to let them know I'll be back. Vet, keep us updated, honey. This house is a nightmare. Robin Hood, all way you guys changed it back, slash, 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 slash. Ultra Strawberry Dreams, we still love our big brother, 333. Three, three. Robin Hood, love you guys, 23. Robin Hood, anyway, I'm heading back home. Spider Tapeman, uh, aye. Electric Boogaloo, woo woo woo. Ultra Red, yeah yeah ah. Robin Hood, lol you sound like Mike Sensei. Baku, yeah hurry up and make those support weapons Deku I wanna kick your butt. Robin Hood, I'll try my best Kakin but it'll take more than a day. Raccoon, yet it might take him too. Robin Hood, slash slash. Possum, you do make that stuff real quick Izuku. Robin Hood, Thank you. Robin Hood, oh yeah, do you guys know what surprises Hitoshi and Dabai have for me? Electric Boogaloo, y'all didn't tell him. Baku, nah. Robin Hood, Kakin's involved. Baku, with eye bags SHT, I don't know what the possum has going on. Possum, you just saw me yesterday and didn't notice. Baku, you got like a haircut or something. Ultra Red, Bakubro, I love you to death, 
but Jesus Christ we all noticed right away, even Denki. Electric Boogaloo, hey now. Spider Tapeman, I could see Dabai lying, but you're telling me Mama Midoriya didn't tell him about the Baku and Shinsu thing? Robin Hood, there's a Kakin and Toshi thing. And I missed it? Baku, not like that you nerd. Raccoon, shut up Izuku. Ultra Strawberry Dreams, wow you guys were quick to yell. Electric Boogaloo, there's something Aoi want to tell us. Baku, go FCK yourselves. Raccoon, shut up. Possum, this is what you get for trying to fight me. Raccoon, I'm gonna steal of your skin. Robin Hood, Toshi don't do that. Spider Tateman changed Raccoon's name to Skin Stealer. Skin Stealer, this is my new hero name. Ultra Red, I thought you wanted Mind Break. Skin Stealer, full title is Mind Break, the Skin Stealer. And he'll be okay with this? A girl with blonde hair buns sat on the couch, fidgeting with her red skirt. The nerd won't give it SHT. Katsuki assured, not looking up from his phone as he typed aggressively. Baku is right, he did it first anyway. Shinsu dodged Katsuki's foot as he patted her shoulder. Yeah, kidnapping's like his thing, I think. There right Himiko, Inko came into the living room and handed the girl a pink mug, Izuku's very understanding and accepting. He'll be more than happy to have a sister. The girl smiled wide, showing off her fangs. I've never had a brother, let alone two. She hooked her arm around Shinsu who barely reacted. I'm excited to meet him. But he want mind rooming with you? She asked Dabai who only shrugged. I bet he'll love rooming with Dabai Tilda. I'll burn you alive. Yeah, well, Shinsu stopped as front door opened. I'm back, Inko clapped and ran to the front door, tackling Izuku in a hug. I missed you too, Mom. He looked and saw Shinsu and Katsuki walking up. I missed you guys too. Where's Dabai? Of course you ask for him first. Izuku shoved Shinsu away before pulling him into a hug. Yeah, well, you guys were being weird in the group chats and made it seem like Izuku cut himself off as he saw Dabai awkwardly leaning against the wall. Oh, is that a good O? Oh? Izuku looked the other over. Before he had gone to the internship, Dabai was a mess of staples and skin grafts. They had talked about getting it treated or seeing a plastic surgeon, but nothing had been set in stone. Now though, while Dabai still had massive burn scars they no longer looked dark purple. They were slightly red with the skin looking slightly tight and like normal burn scars, and instead of the black hair he had grown used to it was now a snow white. Do we like it? Dabai shrugged a little. Feels a hell of a lot better, plus Detective Sukachi thinks I can get in contact with my siblings soon and I figured. Dabai shrugged again, looking nervous as Izuku didn't react. After a moment Izuku chuckled and pulled the older into a hug. Then it looks great, you look great, the two held each other for a minute, and I like your hair, the white really suits you. Thanks. Izuku hummed and looked over his shoulder, a little surprised to see a blonde girl in a skirt and white button-up shirt. Oh, sorry, I didn't know we had a quest. He separated and offered his hand, my name's Midoriya Izuku. I'm Om Himiko, she looked to Inko who was waving her hand, Midoriya Himiko. Midoriya? Wah! He turned to Inko and Shinsu who were both smiling while Dabai and Katsuki looked like they were trying not to laugh, we got a sister. He turned back to Himiko and smiled, picking her up into a hug and spinning her, this is amazing, it's so nice to meet you. He set her down, seeing a fanged smile. You have fangs? That's so cool. Are they related to your quirk? What is your quirk? When did wait? How did we get a sister? Found her. Kaken, what do you mean you found her? We kidnapped her, just like you kidnapped me and Dabai. I didn't kidnap you, he turned back to Himiko. I'm so sorry you had to deal with them. It's okay, they're really great. So are the others, but um, they found me after um, I broke out of my house. Izuku stared at her for a moment. I'm glad you're with us now, he pulled her into another hug before looking to Inko. Oh yeah, where is she staying? 
you didn't make her sleep on the couch, right? Of course not, Izuku. We moved Dabai into your room so you two are sharing now. The others all looked amused while Dabai was covering his face, trying to hide the blush that was now obvious. W what? Is there a problem with that, Izuku? Oh, of course not. Good. Now, why don't you guys go visit the others before they get antsy? They've been wanting to hang out with Himiko again. Izuku was glad that his internship had ended on a Friday since it gave him the weekend to catch up with the others and get to know his new sister. He was happy they had found her and were able to help her, especially since it was Detective Tsukachi who was helping her. He wasn't surprised really since the man had been helping the family all the way back when they got Shinsu. So far it seemed like Denki and Mina got along with Himiko, the most just-off personality alone. Based on past, though Shinsu, Dabai, and Himiko had formed their own little club. So if Himiko is the same age as Senpai, does that mean you guys are twins? Denki was hit in the back of the head by Katsuki. They're not actually related, Dip SHT. They don't even have the same birthday. Izuku looked over at Himiko with a smirk. Wanna be twins, Himiko? Can we? Yep. He stood up and clapped his hands, getting the group's attention. Me and Himiko are twins. We've decided. That's not how it works. Midoriya household. Rabbit, hey mom, me and Himiko are twins. Vet, oh, did you want to share a birthday? Bat, can we? That would be so fun. Panda, can't believe I've already been replaced. Rabbit, try growing up? Panda, I want you dead. Izuku had taken Himiko to work with him on Sunday, while Shinsu and Dabai had offered to bring the girl with them to the dojo so she wasn't left home alone she had decided to go with her twin. I just sorta make drinks and serve people here, we're usually pretty quiet. Whoa, it's so pretty in here. Her eyes had stars as she looked around the small cafe. Glad you like it, Mayumi smiled at the girl. It's nice to meet you, I'm Mayumi, Midoriya's boss. Hi, I'm his twin sister Himiko. His boss barely faltered, used to the chaos Izuku brought everywhere. Well Himiko, I hope to leave Izuku in good hands, she joked, tossing the keys to Izuku, have a safe closing okay? And I expect to hear all about your internship and this later. Of course Mayumi, once she left Izuku went behind the counter and got ready, here, you can sit at one of the stools if you want. Himiko nodded and sat at the one closest to where Izuku normally stood. So does mom expect you to work? PFT no, her and Hitoshi were actually a little worried when I picked the job up. He leaned against the counter. My schedule's usually pretty busy. I have class in the morning. Then we go to the dojo to train. Then if I have time I try to clean up that dirty beach and use the stuff to practice making support items. And then I usually close here before going to bed. Wow, she leaned against her hands. That's awesome. I want to do all that stuff too, Izuku chuckled. The dojo would be easy, but working here might be a little harder. If you're really interested, though I'm sure Mayumi wouldn't mind the help. Himiko nodded her head almost violently, but do you know your schooling level? And not really. That's fine. There's this test we had Toshi take after we adopted him. It'll give us a range, and then we can help you catch up if you're behind. Really? Could I go to school with you? Well, I go to UA and I'm in the hero course. I know for the other classes you can take a test to get accepted later on in the year in case there was a special case, which I'm sure you would count. But for my class you'd probably have to wait till next year. But if I get in I can go to school with you, right? Izuku was a little surprised by how excited she seemed for all of this. Yeah, we'll get you prepared in no time. The two spent most of the day talking about their plans and how they would get Himiko ready for UAASAP. They had the idea that if she was really behind then Katsuki and Dabai would help her catch up when it comes to schooling and training. But if she was only a little then Izuku would tutor her while he worked at the cafe. Problem child, Izuku chuckled as Aizawa walked up to the counter. I assume your internship went well. Yep, black coffee and a muffin, Aizawa nodded. 
watching Izuku work before looking to Himiko who was staring at him with a smile. Who's this? Hi, I'm Himiko Midoriya, I'm Izuku's twin sister. She offered her hand with a large smile. Aizawa shook it slowly, a little confused. I wasn't aware he had a sister. He didn't, Hitoshi and Katsuki found me after I ran away. Aizawa stared at her for a moment. Midoriya. Mom already had Detective Chukachi arrest them and she's officially my sister. He set down the coffee and muffin, and we already have a plan on tutoring her. Yeah, I want to be in the hero course next year like Izuku. Aizawa squinted at both of them as they smiled at him. I pray I don't have to deal with any of your family next year. When they got back home Izuku wasn't surprised to see Shinsu and Dabai both still awake, watching some video essay on the TV. Toshi, you and Himiko should probably get to bed. The blonde had been practically slumped against Izuku ever since they left the cafe, you both need sleep. So do you, Shinsu stood up and grabbed Himiko's arm, dragging her up the stairs night. Night, Dabai stood up and stretched, brats right though, you look dead on your feet. Izuku rolled his eyes but followed Dabai upstairs, grabbing some sweats before changing and sitting on his bed. Izuku's room had been rearranged a little. Luckily, he had one of the bigger rooms, so it allowed them to just split it down the middle with their beds on opposite sides, both having their own small desks in the corner, while Izuku had a closet and Dabai's bed had drawers in the bottom for his clothes. So, Dabai turned to the other, when did you get that all done? It must have taken a while. He sat next to Izuku on his bed and leaned back against the wall. The day after we called, I thought about what you said and, he looked at his hands for a moment, jumping a little when Izuku grabbed one and held it firmly, and I wanted to be different. I didn't want to be some patchwork guy who was covered in the proof of Endeavor's shitty parenting. They couldn't fix it all but dot 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 it feels nice. He ran his thumb over Izuku's hand, noticing the almost invisible scars on his knuckles, feels like I'm me again, you know. I'm really happy for you Dabai, he turned to face the other more head on, I'm proud too, you've gone through so much and you survived, that's amazing. It's amazing that all three of you have gone through terrible things but still come out good on the other side. That's because of you Izuku, Dabai tugged on his hand and brought it up to face, embrace the knuckles, you're the best thing out there. Izuku felt his face heat up as he tried to think of a reply. W well you, you guys I mean it's not, Dabai chuckled and pulled the other teen closer, wrapping his arms around him before laying down. Go to bed Izuku. He relaxed in Dabai's arms, letting out a sigh. Okay. Izuku groaned at the sound of his alarm, fumbling his with his phone before turning it off. I don't want to wake up. He looked down and saw Dabai with his eyes still closed and wrapped around Izuku, just call in or something. I can't call into school, he tried to get up but Dabai just dragged him back down, Dabai let me up, I have to get ready, so do you, the older just groaned Dabai. Fine, he let Izuku up before sitting up and grabbing his own phone, I hate the mornings. I would have never guessed, Izuku grabbed his clothes and changed in the bathroom, not surprised to see Dabai still trying to wake himself up, I'm gonna make coffee, you want some? For the love of God, yes. Izuku chuckled and went downstairs, not surprised to already see his mom awake. Morning, mom. Morning, honey. What are today's plans? Well, we'll walk the others to school, then come back to change. Then I'll go to school. Himiko said she'd take the test today so we can help her and Dabai said he'd be willing to hang out with her at work and stuff until we get out. My little problem solver, she kissed his forehead, Make sure to relax sometimes though. I will mom, have a good day at work. I'll try, make sure to remind Dabai to talk with the detective later too. The two hugged before Inko grabbed her bag and keys and left. Did I miss mom? Shinsu asked as he rubbed his eyes before face planting on the counter. You did, but she said she has the evening off. Cool, Izuku rolled his eyes and filled a purple mug with coffee and slid it over, you're the best brother. 
He rolled his eyes again and filled two more mugs, one blue and the other green, though he wasn't sure what Himiko would want to drink. Morning, she looked a little tired still, but was more awake than Dabai was since he still hadn't come down, can I have tea? Sure, mind running this up to Dabai? She nodded and carefully took the mug before going upstairs while Izuku worked on the tea. She fit in easily, Shinsu pointed out, slowly sipping at his own mug. I'm glad, I think she'll be great. You're just happy to have someone else who distracts the others. They are a lot to deal with. As soon as Izuku walked into the class he got a water bottle tossed to him. He was thankful since Himiko had turned the last part of their walk into a race and he wasn't willing to lose. Thanks. MHM, you want to tell me how your internship went? Really well. Hawks actually gave me some ideas for more support weapons and adjustments for my fighting style. Plus Maruko was there, and since she's more of a physical fighter, it was great practice. Good, I want an essay on the experience later. If you have ideas for support, run them by power loader and get to work. Yes, sir. Before Izuku could leave, though, Aizawa grabbed his arm. One last thing. Sakachi contacted me about your dot 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 fr and comma. Is there a reason he has a case open? Well, Dabai didn't do anything bad, I promise. It's more about his family. His, um, his home life was like Hitoshi's and Himiko's. That's the best way to explain it. But he has a little brother and wants to help him. Aizawa stared at him, searching for a lie. But when he didn't find anything, he nodded. All right. If either of you need help, let me know, kid. Thank you, Aizawa-sensei, he paused before hugging the teacher quickly. I'm gonna work on support now. He ran out the door before Aizawa could stop him again. Once he was in the support room, he waved to some of the other students before going to his own little corner. Since he came so often and made his own things, Power Loader had set up an extra workbench for him to use. It was smaller than the others, but Izuku didn't mind since he usually worked in the living room or his own room. And what are we working on today, Midoriya? Power Loader leaned over to look at his notebook, Gauntlets. Sort of, they'll go over my knuckles and probably end before my elbow. He showed some of the details of the sketch. The idea is that they'll look something like brass knuckles in resting form. But when I hit them together, they'll activate and stretch out to create armor. I want to add electricity to it like my rods, maybe some extra stuff, and I'll have to edit them so I can still use the capture weapon. Izuku then trailed off mumbling new and old ideas to change or fix about the gauntlets. Best of luck, you know where to find me. He nodded at the teacher absentmindedly, writing down new ideas a mile a minute. When lunchtime came around though power loader kicked him and the other students out to make sure they ate. Izuku grabbed two trays like normal, setting the tray on Aizawa's desk since the teacher was in a meeting. Though present Mike assured him that he would make the hero eat, he went up to the roof, already seeing Suzuki sitting there and working on her homework. Himari, he sat down next to her and pulled her into a hug, you'll never guess what. What? I got a sister, Suzuki gasped and shook Izuku's shoulders. You got a sister? I have to meet her. We should hang out after school. I don't work the cafe today, but we're helping her get ready to start school. I love that. I'll totally come. Besides, I miss my little gremlins and teasing you about you know who Tilda Izuku blushed and shoved her any news on him. Well, while I was away, he got the procedure done to fix the old skin grafts and he stopped dyeing his hair. It looks really nice. Suzuki wiggled her eyebrows at him, and um well with the sister I um a sherry room with him no. Slow down, you share a room? Izuku ducked his head as she began to freak out. Oh my god, my babies are growing up so fast. Shut up. Use protection. Shut up. The two laughed for a minute before Suzuki saw his notebook. What are we working on today, Mr. Brainiac? Well, I got this idea from Kirishima's quirk, and then I got some ideas from the others, and then Hawks got jealous, and it just kinda spiraled into this. He showed her the pages, glove-like gauntlets that when I hit them together they cover most of my forearm. 
They'll have an electrical charge like my rods, so the inside will need to be insulated. And I'm thinking of adding stuff like charges and canisters. So I can set off explosions and make my punches stronger and maybe acid to much melt stuff. And I want the metal to be able to slide against itself smoothly. Kinda like the back of my heels when they stretch back and slam to give my kicks extra strength. And then I want a knife to come out the top. It'll be removable obviously, but it could be really handy in an emergency. I also have to change the screen on my arm computer. But I'm thinking of changing that to a visor with gloves that can affect what's where on the visor. Kinda like one of the pre-quirk Siffy movies we watched. Maybe I can make the visor cover my eyes too. Suzuki stared at him for a moment before grabbing the sides of his face. Your brain is such a mystery and wonder to me. Thank you? It was a compliment, she let him go and flipped through the notebook. This all looks sick though. I agree on the visor thing too. People will just think it's sunglasses or something. You should do a whole rebrand. But I like my costume. Not like entirely, I love the white and black thing you have going on. But you'll have to redesign some stuff so just go crazy, Izuku thought about it before smiling. You're right, I should go for it. Hell yeah. The two spent the rest of lunch coming up with new ideas for his costume and what they should change. I'll ask the others too. Don't forget to meet me out front after school. They split up as Izuku went back to his classroom for the rest of his lessons. Every time he got done early, he immediately started getting to work on the redesign. He had seen a bit of tech wear stuff when Mitsuki and Masaru were working and asking the kids for their opinions on a new design. And he had liked some of the shapes the clothing made as well as some of the seemingly random designs on the clothes. He wrote down the changes he wanted to make as well as small sketches of the clothes and new support items. While he knew students and heroes went through changes in costume, he wondered if some were as drastic as the ones he was making. Did you make any progress on your new support ideas? Aizawa asked at the end of the day, watching as Izuku got packed up. Not exactly. He lifted a brow and waited for Izuku to explain, well, I was showing Himari some of my ideas and was talking about how I might have to change some stuff to adjust for the new tech when she suggested I just sort of throw everything away and redesign all of my stuff including my costume. That'll take time. I know, but I already have most of the designs done. I just have to send in the costume and then finish the support stuff. I'll be done in no time I promise. Just make sure you're finished before your end of semester exams. Yes, sir, he bowed before grabbing his bag and jacket. Have a good day, Aizawa Sensei. Stay safe, kid. He ran out front, already seeing Suzuki wait for him. She smiled and tackled him, almost making them both fall. Suzuki maneuvered herself so Izuku could carry her around. Am I just a horse now? Giddy up, she kicked his side laughing when he jabbed her with his elbow, but seriously, are we waiting for them? Yeah, they should be here soon though. Izuku, this time it was Himiko who tackled him, I had so much fun today. The test was a little difficult but Dabai said I did good. She turned to Suzuki, hi, I'm Himiko Midoriya, Izuku's twin sister. Suzuki Himari, Izuku's best friend. The two shook hands like it was a business deal. You guys should probably get off him before he drops. Wrong. I've seen him hold up a building. Both still got off of Izuku like Dabai told them too. Bet you just want him all to yourself, Tilda. You almost as bad as the raccoon. Dabai rolled his eyes before laying an arm around Izuku's shoulders. How was school? Pretty good, actually. I've started redesigning my hero costume and gear because I wanted to add and change some stuff. But then Himari said I should just redo it all. It's true I did, she turned to Himiko. If you're going to school with us, you should totally start designing your costume. Yes, I want red and pink. Maybe we should all design costumes. I know the others have been wanting to work on them before they apply. We should totally sew that today. Oh, is someone slacking off? Dabai teased, getting a punch in the shoulder. You're the one that wanted me to call in today so we could stay in bed. 
You're in his bed? Izuku took off running as Suzuki chased him, screaming about details while Himiko and Dabai laughed. I want funky designs, Mina swirled on the paper, purple and blue for sure. I want to look trippy. I think I'll go a little simple for mine, Siro shrugged a little, keep it cool and calm. Hanto, we should match colors, Kaminari shouted, latching onto the other's shoulder, we'd look cool as hell. HM, what do you think, Bakubro? Kirishima showed him the picture like a kid showing their parent the drawing. You have a shitty art style, but the outfit isn't bad. He likes it. The others cheered while Katsuki rolled his eyes. You know you can call me Katsuki, right? The others all paused and turned to him. We've been dot 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 fr eens dot 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 long enough. He called us friends. Mina and Kamenani were quick to tackle him while Kirishima and Siro were a little more hesitant. Shinsu just rolled his eyes and went back to his own ideas. I forgot how chaotic they are, Suzuki said with an evil smile. It's so much fun, Himiko and Suzuki then went back to designing their own costumes, Himiko asking for the other girl's opinion on some of the choices. What do you have so far? Dabai bumped his head against Izuku's shoulder. They were all laying on the ground drawing in a circle. Izuku thought it was a little funny since Shinsu and Katsuki often messed with the group for being childish. You're not beating the feral cat allegations. Dabai laughed a little and bumped him again. Who said I was trying to? Izuku rolled his eyes and moved the papers a bit so Dabai could see. I was thinking of maybe going for a mage dressed in tech wear in the future. I don't know how but that perfectly explains all of this. Dabai picked it up and rolled so he was laying on his back. This'll be cool though. What about that visor and mask you were talking about? Well I was thinking of something where like on the outside it's like those glasses that make eyes and faces, but on the inside it's like a computer screen. Like maybe it could give live subtitles or translations. Show me the notes I have on someone's quirk. Stuff like that. Maybe night vision and infrared. And then for the mask I thought about going full gas mask. Make it all bulky so it can hide the mic that picks up my voice. Maybe a little screen that shows a mouth so it can match with the visor. Looks like you got a lot of chunky tech planned. Yep. If it's chunky it'll be harder to break but people might aim for it more thinking it helps a quirk or something. Good idea, Dabai handed the papers back. Hey Izuku, I left my phone in my gym bag. Can you go get it for me? Sure. The teen stood up and went into the locker room. Once he was out of sight, Dabai got the other's attention. Listen up children, Suzuki and Katsuki looked ready to argue, but Dabai didn't let them... I want to ask Izuku out, and I need help coming up with how and what we should do. You're that confident he'll say yes? He stared at Katsuki for a minute, who shrugged fair enough. You should take him to a really fancy restaurant, Mina shouted, on the perfect night so it's a little chilly and you can give him your jacket and... I don't think Senpai would like that stuff. Yeah, our brother's a romantic, but not that much of one. Plus, eating in big crowds tends to freak him out. Yep, me and Izuku eat on the roof during lunch. Oh, oh, Kaminari raised his hand, waiting till Dabai pointed at him. You should take him for a walk. Dude, you're not even trying. Sparky's got a point. Deku likes to walk around and shit. You should go to that little food truck near the shopping area. They have really good snacks, Himiko offered her own mouth drooling at the thought of food. Then, you should go to the forest. Go near the lake, it'll be so cute. Okay, but how do I ask him? You ask him? Dabai rolled his eyes. Yeah, no shit. But we also live together and share a room now, so how? Do I? Ask. Him. Okay, Dabai. Shinsu stood up and pretended to dust himself off. This is the most help you get from me and Katsuki, all right? Have you two thought about this? Hard no to when you two are staring at each other all day. Here's what you do. This weekend he doesn't work at the cafe. In the morning once you're both awake you ask him if he wants to go for a walk. You do all the romantic stuff we listed. 
Then at the end you grab his hand like it's a bad rom-com and confess your undying love for him and make out under the stars all right. You both like romance novels too much. Romance novels that are helping so shut up. I couldn't find your phone but, Izuku paused, why are you both standing? They were gonna finally duke it out. Izuku sighed, obviously buying the lie. Please don't. I don't think Kirishima's moms would appreciate it. They definitely wouldn't dudes, I feel like you two would go for murder. I hope to poison his coffee one day. I'll chug the pot if I don't have to see you again. It's done, Izuku ran into the teacher's lounge holding the cases that now had his new hero costume and gear, can we try it out? Head to the training area. Aizawa stood up as Izuku cheered and ran out of the room. Ah, oh, look at Sho being a dad. Shut up. Izuku opened the costume case first, practically vibrating as he pulled the clothes out. The undershirt was a white sleeveless athletic fabric that allowed him to move and breath easy. Over top was a black jacket with white lining. The torso of the jacket was form-fitting while the sleeves were baggy, allowing him to hide the new gauntlets and capture weapon. There were parts of the jacket cut out to let more of the white peek out. The pants were black with white zippers and random white lines crossing over each other. Straps were added to the pants to hold his guns, emergency knife, and fold able staff. His shoes were chunky black boots with white metal soles. He had changed them so they could turn into the ice skates and roller blades, but no skateboard. He also added more weight and mechanics to make his kicks more powerful. Pulling out all of his tech, he carefully put it on and turned everything on. The gauntlets looked like armored gloves in resting form. Hitting them together caused the metal to stretch out over his jacket. There were parts in the gauntlet where he could load special rounds that would cause explosions or eject acid depending on the gauntlet he used. Both had the electricity built in like his staff, the jacket acting as a cover and insulation so his arms would stay safe. Since the gauntlets restricted the capture weapon he made it so when activated it would automatically load the fabric for him to shoot and use similar to Ciro. He hit a small switch with his finger, causing a large, feather-like knife to pop out of the top of the gauntlets. He tested it a little before hitting the button again and making it disappear. Finally he put on the visor, hat, and gas mask. Turning the visor on revealed that his gloves had a connection to it allowing him to change what he saw by using his hand. There was voice activation built in, but the hands would be easier for him to do when he was just working. Checking the mirror showed that the mask and eye screen were both working, letting it create different eyes and mouth shapes. He deactivated the gauntlets and went to the training ground where Aizawa was already standing. Looks good, I like the new design, Izuku rubbed his neck a little, and the screens change. Yep. The voice was a little distorted as he spoke, so people can still understand me. I can change it though if I'm trying to hide something. Good, get in position. Izuku nodded and got into a fighting stance. He didn't want Aizawa to see the gauntlets quite yet since they were meant to be a surprise to an enemy. The two stared at each other for a moment before Aizawa took off. Izuku drew one of his guns and started shooting immediately. Though this was to test out his new gear, he still wanted to show his teacher he had improved with his fighting. He aimed mostly at the elder's feet to trip him up, which worked until Aizawa used his capture weapon to get closer. He holstered the gun before drawing his staff, using it to try and hit the teacher before splitting it and blocking a hit. Not bad, good change to a staff, but try to work quicker on the change between staff and rods. Yes, sir, he jumped back before Aizawa could kick him. He swung his own leg, hitting the ground, the metal heel of his shoe extending before shooting forward, causing more ground to break as he kicked. Interesting choice. The kicked-up dirt blinded Aizawa a moment, Izuku using his own capture weapon to try and get the teacher still a little slow on the transition to capture weapon. Don't copy me to close, kid. Right. He dodged a hit before smirking, hope you're ready. He put his staff away before hitting his knuckle together, laughing a little when Aizawa looked surprised. 
HM, not bad for a surprise, good for fighting villains, he dodged a punch from Izuku. Looking in surprise as the place he previously stood exploded from the punch, what was that? Aizawa stopped the fight. More curious about the tech than the fight. Oh, my left gauntlet is loaded with explosive rounds while my right has acid stored. Both have electricity built in though, he twisted his wrists a little, causing green lightning to appear over his arms. My costume has insulation so it won't hurt me. Plot I have two knives now. Izuku turned the electricity off before activating the knife, making Aizawa jump a little. Jesus Christ, I regret letting you go with Hawks and Maruko. Dabai felt like he was going to have a panic attack. He probably was having one currently, but that didn't matter. Dabai, you need to breathe okay, Inko rubbed his back, trying to get him to focus. It'll be okay, I just need you to take a nice deep breath. Finally, he took a breath. Choking a little, good, keep going okay. Is he okay? Hamiko asked a little worried. She wasn't sure how to help other than sit with him. Izuku was a lot better at this stuff. Do you want to tell us what happened? They let Dabai calm down, simply waiting for an answer. T they talked to? To mom and Shouto and and they, he shuddered a little before smiling. They don't have to deal with Endeavor anymore. Yay! Himiko cheered before hugging Dabai. Wait, but why were you panicking? They, he looked to Inko who nodded, they want to see me. Do you want to see them? Inko asked carefully. Yes, yeah, I just... He looked at his arms, even though they were no longer that dark purple, the signs were still there, his skin tight and scared, I just don't want them to see me. Oh honey, Inko held his face, your family loves you, there's no reason they would care about how you look, as long as you're alive. I know, just. You're worried about whether or not they'll actually like you? They both looked to Himiko surprised. It's how I felt when you guys talked about Izuku, how nice and understanding he was and I trusted you. But there was, something that made me think it was all a lie, that he would be like the others at my school, but he wasn't. She hugged Dabai close, he was amazing, and now I have an amazing family, so you should trust us like I trusted you. He stared at her for a moment before smiling. Thanks, Himiko. No problem. Now when are we meeting them? Well, um, he lifted the phone and looked at the text from the detective. Sukachi said they were at the station right now. They're getting everything sorted out right now, so we could go now? Do you want to go now or wait until the others get here? Even if Dabai complained about them, they all knew he treasured the kids and appreciated them. L, let's go now and maybe, maybe come back instead of having a conversation at the station. All right, I'll let my boss know I can't come in today while you two get dressed. Standing outside the room, Tsukachi told them to go to felt even more nerve-wracking than deciding to come in the first place. We can turn around right now, Dabai. We won't force you. And no, I can, he still hesitated, but Himiko didn't. I'll go first and warm them up for you. Himi, she ignored them and threw the door open and burst in before closing the door behind her. She could buy her friend time. Hello. The five in the room all stared at her before Tsukachi rolled his eyes. Nice to meet you. My name's Himiko Midoriya. I'm Izuku's twin sister. She offered her hand to Rei who shook it slowly. Hello. I'm sorry I don't know who Izuku is. Don't worry about it, Miss Ray. Tsukachi tried to guide Himiko away from them, but she was persistent. Offer her hand to the others as well. Like she said, she's Himiko Midoriya. Midoriya is the family that is currently housing Taoya. He prefers Dabai, by the way. Right, Ray smiled. Thank you for taking care of my son, Dabai. No need, he's been living there longer than I have. Natsuo looked at her weirdly. But... You're a Midoriya? Adopted, she nodded to Tsukachi who explained. Himiko was found by their youngest son and their friend. She had run away from an abusive home and they took her in. Yep, they have a habit of doing that, she joked, sitting next to Fayumi. I definitely see the resemblance. Um, no offense to you, Miss Mid. 
You can just call me Himiko, she smiled, and don't worry, Dabai's just nervous so I'm buying him time. He's nervous? They all turned to Shouto who had been rather silent. Yeah, he um, I don't know if Chukochi told you but he got hurt badly. The three oldest frowned. We remember the scars. I think they were worse since he left, but I don't know much. Shouto nodded his head once and stood up, going to the door. Shouto, Fayumi tried to stop him, but he already opened the door, coming face to face with Dabai. Um, hey? Shouto stared at him before grabbing onto him, hugging his brother tightly. I thought you were dead. Dabai's eyes widened, he was still a little surprised by the hug but he slowly wrapped his arms around his little brother, covering the slight shake of his shoulders. Sorry. Dabai looked to the other three and opened one of his arms, prompting the others to stand and join the hug. Miss Midoriya, she looked to Tsukachi, let's let them talk while. She knew he wanted to ask her something as well as give them privacy. Of course, Imiko, the girl stood and skipped over to her mother, following the two adults out of the room, what is it you need, detective? While we deal with this case, we were able to get custody of Todoroki Shouto thanks to Yua. Inko was a little surprised to hear that, though she didn't doubt that the staff loved her son enough to help him with whatever he asked. They have offered to house Miss Ray and the young Todoroki while we deal with this case, but... But if they've been reunited with Dabai, they shouldn't be separated, Inko thought for a moment. They could shuffle the children around a little and it's only Shouto and Rei. Correct, the other two live in an apartment. Miss Fayumi owns the apartment, but stayed home to try and keep Shouto safe. I think we can deal with a few more house guests, she turned to her daughter, think the boys will mind? Nope. Then it's decided, we'll take them with us, Tsukachi. While the family had mostly only hugged at the station, they all seemed to relax once they entered the Midoriya household. You have a lovely home. Fayumi complimented as Inko handed out different drinks. Thank you. The kids make it more lively, I like to think. So where were you? Shouto asked, cutting straight to the chase. Around a bit, Dabai waved his hand, mostly the streets or shelters for a while. Then I ran into Izuku one day, and they wouldn't let me leave until I was healed so. You were hurt? Ray looked worried for a moment while Natsuo began looking his younger brother over. Was, he shoved the other a little, though didn't mind when his brother kept his arm over his shoulder, I was um, I kinda got into this fight, he was being an ass, language. To this nice lady that helped me before, I beat him up obviously, but he got a lucky shot and kinda, stabbed me in the shoulder. And this Izuku took you to the hospital. Well. Dabai sank down a bit, trying to hide in his cup, while Inko chuckled, No, I wouldn't let him. Don't worry though, Inko sat in one of the open spots with Himiko next to her, I'm a nurse and I make sure all of my kids have first aid training. He was in safe hands and we could have taken him to the hospital if it was really bad. Thank you then. Inko waved Ray off while Dabai continued. Turns out I was bleeding pretty badly, and I ended up passed out in an alley near Izuku's work. He found me on his way home, and just kinda picked me up and took me here. Does he just kidnap people? Natsuo asked, getting the others to laugh. What? Please ask him that when he gets here, Dabai said. I need to see the look on his face. But you've been doing good, Ray asked, resting a hand on her son's shoulder. Why, yeah, the Midorias have been great, I have a job, got a few friendish people running around, it's been, it's been good. Ray pulled him into another hug. I'm so glad. The sweet moment was interrupted as the front door banged against the wall and Kaminari ran in, resting his hands on his knees and panting. Dabai, I need you to hide me. Why do you? Where is he? What did you do? The family looked confused but Inko waved them off, just saying this usually happened. Something I'll never regret but Katsuki will get me really close to. Hide me. Fine, go to the stairs and I'll distract him. 
You're the best man, Kaminari seemed to finally notice the other four in the living room. Hi there, my name's Kaminari Denki. Please come to my funeral if he finds me. With that the blonde raced up the stairs and ducked behind the wall. The door slammed again as Katsuki walked in, his hands steaming as he panted, looking around. Where is he, you stupid possum? He paused when he saw the new people. Hi, they kidnap you too. Uh no, we're Dabai's family, Katsuki rolled his eyes. Doesn't mean you're not kidnapped. Now where is Pikachu so I can kill him? The one with the lightning bolt, Shadow asked. Getting a nod, Dabai told him to hide behind the stairs. Traitor, Kaminari shouted, running back down and outside the house. Katsuki pointed at Shouto. You half and half are my new best friend, he turned and chased Kaminari. Get back here so I can kill you. You won't be missed, Denki, Shinsu shouted as he walked into the living room, looking the group up and down. Sup, I'm Shinsu, Himiko and Izuku's little brother, and this guy's worst nightmare. Dabai nodded. It's true, he's annoying. And you live on our couch so shut up, he hugged Inko. Hi, Mom. Himiko bounced after the other teen, both of them getting snacks from the kitchen. We'll hold a beautiful funeral denki, Mina shouted as she, Kirishima, and Siro walked in, all sitting on the floor. Hi. My name's Mina Ashido. Kirishima Ijiro. Siro Hanta at your service, he gave a two-finger salute. Are you guys joining our little family? He pointed to Fayumi and Natsuo. Sadly, we aren't looking for any more older siblings, so you'll have to apply another time. Mina burst out laughing while Kirishima rolled his eyes. Ignore them, it's nice to meet you. We're Dabai's family, I'm Rei. This is my oldest Fayumi, Natsuo, you already know Dabai, and my youngest Shouto. Cool to meet you man, Kirishima offered a fist bump that Shouto returned carefully, let me guess, Cat called you half and half didn't he? How'd you know? We're very attuned to our angry dog, Mina said, nodding confidently. Don't take it personally, Shinsu and Himiko set the snacks on the table. He gives everyone bad nicknames. Shitty hair, raccoon eyes alien girl, soy sauce face, eye bags raccoon, Pikachu dunce face, possum slash staples slash burnt chicken nugget. Why did I get so many nicknames? I think he likes to challenge himself and give you as many as possible until you react to one, Dabai shrugged a little, and then you have Vampy and of course the iconic Deku. He read my name wrong once when we were younger, Izuku walked in, having shut the door and made sure the wall wasn't damaged. Hi, my name's Midoriya Izuku, you must be Rei, Fayumi, Natsuo, and Shouto, right? He pointed to each one, seeming to guess. How did you know? Dabai talks about you guys a lot, he set his bag near the stairs. I'll be right back, I have to go stop Kaken from killing Denki. He went out the back door, likely to chase the two down. How'd you guys outrun him anyway? I wish I was joking, but he was saving a kitten from a tree and making sure the little girl that lost it got home safe. Dabai sighed and rolled his eyes. Of course he was. Shinsu stared at the group before turning to his mom. So do they live with us too now? We'll talk about that later Hitoshi. The teen only shrugged, used to it at this point. I'm sorry, but is this normal? Fayumi asked, looking at the group of teens and hearing shouting in the background as Izuku came back, dragging both blondes inside. You all seem fairly calm to have strangers in your house and even hinting at us living here. Oh, so you're like new new, Izuku let Kaminari go. Well you see miss, Katsuki was the first since his parents and Mama Inko grew up together. Then one day we found out that Ijiro's moms trained Izuku, and we were added to the little family. Then Izuku kidnapped, I didn't kidnap him. Hitoshi and he was added, then he kidnapped, not kidnapping. Dabai, then when he was gone Hitoshi and Katsuki kidnapped Himiko. So we expected Mama Inko and Dabai to one day do the same. You just happen to also be Dabai's family. He turned to the other teens. Do we think this counts? I don't know, Mina rubbed her chin. 
they did show up and are on the couch just like the rest. True, it would be like with us, right? Yeah, but I already told them we're not looking for more older siblings. I feel like senpai's got it down. I don't because you all keep saying I kidnap people. He turned to the family and smiled. I promise they all came willingly. I don't know, Izuku. I was suffering from blood loss. Dabai argued. Dabai, don't you? He's right. You did break into my house. I felt threatened. Shinsu nodded. Both of you, I swear. My parents dumped me on you, Deku. Kaken. The teens all started laughing while Izuku groaned. You're all a very lively bunch, Ray smiled at them. I thank you all for looking after my son and offering your home to us, but Izuku cut her off. Miss, I don't know you exactly, but I know Dabai cares for you for a lot. Enough to risk a lot to get help. If he wants you around, if you want to stick around then we'll have you. He laid a hand on her shoulder. You're all amazing people and we would be honored to even have you as guests. They all sat in silence for a moment before Natsuo broke it. Holy shit, I see it now, I feel coerced, we've been kidnapped. He set his head in his hands while the others lost it. While the kids all distracted each other Inko pulled Ray aside. I talked to the detective, I know Fayumi and Natsuo have a place to stay but yourself and Shouto don't. So please stay here with us, Dabai would love it, and he's important to my family so you're important too. Ray looked ready to argue but Inko didn't let her, we have a few extra rooms, we'll just clean them out and you'll be able to stay here, not forever if you don't want to, but at least long enough for the case to be closed and you to be on your feet. T thank you Inko, she hugged the other woman, thank you for saving my family. Inko smiled and looked into the living room where Izuku was trying to coax Shouto into eating or drinking something. I didn't save your family, but I'm glad I can help. So we could have Hitoshi and Izuku share a room while Shouto and Dabai share one. Himiko could share with me, Inko slightly mumbled to herself as she looked over the rooms they had. We could clear out some more rooms too. Miss Inko? She turned to Shouto with a smile. Hi honey, you don't have to call me miss, just Inko is fine, what can I help you with? Well I'm Inko, I actually had an idea. He handed her his phone, Dabai said you're a nurse and Fayumi helped look into it. But there's a few houses near there that are for sale and I think could be within our price range. Oh, the looked at a few of the houses, I'm not sure Shouto, these seem really. We could pay for it, the teen shrugged a little. I heard mom and the detective talking and they said Endeavor had to pay us a lot of money. That money's for you guys to use, we don't need to. Inko, she looked to see Ray standing by the stairs, please let us, you've already helped so much. Buying a new house will hardly put a dent in anything. Let us help you like you helped us. As long as you're both sure, I don't want to use your money like that. Dabai said I should just think of it as wasting Endeavor's money, Shouto shrugged a little, it's kind of fun. Since Shouto and Ray were now living with them, and moving with them once they settled on a house. The group had decided to try their best to integrate them into the group. Ray had been easy since the woman seemed to like the company of Inko and the Bakugus, often relaxing with a book while Mitsuki worked or helping Inko and Masaru cook. Shouto had been a little more difficult though, Dabai had explained it as being isolated as a kid, Dabai being similar before he ran away. Kaminari, Siro, and Mina seemed to take that as a challenge though grabbing the ice user and making him join in whenever they could. How long have they been doing this? Dabai asked, leaning against the wall. They were at the gym like always, most of them deciding to relax or work on homework, except for Kaminari, Siro, and Mina who had dragged Shouto with him. No idea, Izuku took a sip from his water bottle, what are they even doing? They thought it would be a good idea to teach him some dances. Kirishima explained from his spot next to Katsuki and Shinsu. I think it's one Mina keeps seeing on her phone. He's surprisingly good, Shinsu pointed. He looks like an idiot. Izuku rolled his eyes and nudged Katsuki with his foot. 
Don't worry, Cat, I'm sure you'd be even better and H. Katsuki jumped up and tackled Kirishima who started laughing while Shinsu just rolled out of the way. I will never understand them, Izuku shook his head before looking to Dabai. All right, what is it? What's what? You've had this look on your face for a couple days now, like you want to say something, so what is it? The older blushed a bit and looked away. I do not. Yes you do, come on Dabai what is it? He leaned next to Dabai, tilting his head to try and meet his eyes. Is there another secret in there? You're suddenly a villain or something? Har har, no it's not that. Dabai took a deep breath before facing Izuku head on, when everything calms down and we're all settled and shit would you? Would you want to go on a date? Yes, he covered his mouth when everyone looked at him. I, I mean yeah I would love to, yeah. Both of them were blushing and having trouble looking at each other. I want you to know you guys did this in reverse, Shinsu said, smirking at the two, you already lived together and were like your adopted kids. Wait, I thought he was dating my brother. No, they've just been dancing around each other for a while. We were not, Izuku glared at them, making the other three slowly back up. We didn't mean anything by it, senpai, he ignored Siro and began chasing the three around the gym. I sometimes forget he acts like Katsuki sometimes. More like Kat acts like him. Izuku felt exhausted, with semester exams coming up. Packing for the move, training, and working still, he felt like he was dead on his feet. Hey Midoriya, he jumped a little and turned to see Mirio, Tamaki, and Nejair walking up to him, how's it going? P pretty good senpai, how are you guys? We're great, say I heard you changed your costume again, you have to show my sometime. I heard you have knives now, are you trained with them? Are you even trained with any of the weapons you use? Sorta with the knives, those are a little more recent, but yes, every weapon I use I'm either currently training or have trained with them. Izuku answered Nejaira's questions easily while Mirio tried to get Tamaki to interact with him. Come on Tamaki, Midori is nice, it's only one person. Izuku and Nejaira watched the two for a moment before the bell rang. It was good see you Midoriya, Nejaira dragged Mirio who was dragging Tamaki, away and to their own classes while Izuku waved and headed to his own. Have you been sleeping properly? Izuku jumped again, turning to Aizawa who had his arms crossed. Sorry sensei, I didn't see you there. You didn't answer the question. Oh, well, um, Izuku rubbed the back of his neck, not exactly. Um, Dabai's mom and little brother are moving in with us because of some home life stuff so we decided to move and it's just taking a lot of energy to pack everything, still work, help Emiko and Hitoshi with school, helping the others train. You're taking a nap. Aizawa grabbed his arm and started dragging him to the teacher's lounge. What? Aizawa-sensei shouldn't I? You should be resting, the other teen looked down a little. You're ahead of the usual curriculum, so there's no reason you shouldn't be able to take a day off and relax. So you're going to lay down on the couch and sleep while I catch up on some reports and grading. Uh, are you sure? The teacher just stared at him, right? Aizawa pushed him into the lounge. Luckily none of the teachers were there since classes had just started. Here, Izuku got a face full of blanket as Aizawa threw it at him. There's already pillows on the couch. T thank you Aizawa sensei, he hesitantly sat on the couch with the blanket covering his legs, you're sure the other teachers want mind? If they mind they'll keep their mouths shut, Izuku frowned a little, no problem child they want mind. As long as you're sure, he thought for a moment before getting his headphones out and playing music. He had a calming playlist specifically for when he slept or was having trouble sleeping, wake me up before lunch please. Sure kid. Aizawa wasn't going to wake him up if he wasn't already awake. He could see the teen was exhausted. After a few minutes Aizawa turned around in his desk and double-checked that Izuku was actually asleep. Once he was sure he wrote sleeping do not disturb on a paper before taping it to the teacher's lounge door. That way Mike or Midnight wouldn't come bursting into the room and wake the kid up. 
He stepped out of the room and dialed Izuku's mother. If she didn't answer then he would just leave a message and hope she got back to him later. Hello? Hello? Is this Midoriya Inko? It's your son's teacher. Oh, Aizawa, is he doing okay? Did something happen? Not exactly, I was just wondering if everything at home is okay. He came in this morning looking a little tired, so I'm having him take a nap for now. Oh, I knew he was working himself to hard. We're moving to a bigger house due to some personal problems, and I told him to let us deal with it since he has exams coming up, but he's just so determined to help. I've convinced his boss to let him take a few days off and only call him if she really needed him, but he then he just goes to the gym with the kids more and overworks there. That doesn't surprise me, Aizawa thought about it for a moment before sighing, your son builds a lot right? I know he's built his own weapons and tools, but I don't know the exact extent of it. Yes, Izuku builds all the time. He actually built his friend a phone. He's quite smart, but um, what does that have to do with anything? If the problem is having free time in his schedule, then I might have an idea. I'm all ears. Izuku Tilda, he groaned, shoving Suzuki's face away. Even if he wasn't fully awake, he knew it was her. It's me, Tilda, your boyfriend. Dead body on the couch himself, Tilda, bolting upright, he grabbed the pillow he was using and smacked her with it, making the girl fall. Shut up. Ooh, you have a boyfriend? He turned to see some of the other teachers in the room, most notably Midnight, who was wiggling her eyebrows. No. Yes. Shut up. Suzuki only smirked. He has a boyfriend, and they live together and sleep. Shut your mouth, he tackled the girl to the ground who just kept laughing. Sounds like you're moving fast, little listener. Izuku's entire face was red as he glared at Suzuki, no need to rush things. It's not like that. Young love, how amazing, Izuku groaned and hid his face in Suzuki's stomach who just laughed harder, patting his back in fake sympathy. What's going on? Aizawa walked into the room with a few papers in hand. I thought I left a note not to wake him up. It was me, Suzuki raised her hand since she was still on the floor. I brought sustenance, she pointed to the three lunch trays sitting on the side table. Lunch Rush handed me an extra one for you too. Then you're forgiven, he looked down at Izuku who was still blushing and hiding in his best friend. What did I miss? Nothing. He jumped up waving his arms, absolutely nothing. Himari was just teasing about something. Yeah, I was, Izuku clapped a hand over her mouth. She was sitting down and eating lunch with me. Suzuki slowly nodded her head. Yep, that. The two teens quickly grabbed their own trays and sat on the couch, whispering to each other while the other teachers tried not to laugh at Aizawa's confused expression. All right. He slowly sat at his desk, looking to the others for clarification, but none of them said anything, all turning away to their own work. Well, Midoriya, we were thinking next semester to dual enroll you. He handed the papers that showed a new schedule. Not much would change other than having specific times to work with Power Loader and a few of the other support students. You would also get the chance to analyze and help other students pick out and design gear. Really? I would love to do that. I assumed you would. When you take the written exams, we'll see how far ahead of the curriculum you actually are and go from there. Your schedule will have you with me in the morning, and your usual classes. Then after lunch you'll be in the support course classes and any extra things we need to add. More training with Snipe, training with me, things like that. This is awesome, he looked at the papers. What about this spot right here? It's blank, and it says it's an after-school program. That would be the training, Aizawa rested his elbows on his knees. Your sister wants to join the hero course right. She'll likely need after-school training to catch up, and I know of one other person willing to transfer. He looked to Suzuki, who smirked, not to mention next year will be a lot different for you. This will help you get prepared. Right. I'll have to send Mayumi my schedule later so she knows when I can't work. Wow, little listener, you do a lot. You have three jobs. This isn't about me. 
dibs on the biggest room. Oh no you don't, Hitoshi and Himiko ran up the stairs, trying to trip each other up as they went. Glad those two are already excited, Inko laughed. Why don't you three go pick out the rest of the rooms while me and Ray tell the movers what to do? Sure thing, Dabai slung an arm over Shouto and Izuku's shoulders. Obviously I'll choose since I'm the oldest. Oh, is that how we're deciding now? Izuku crossed his arms with a smirk. You two of course will get the best rooms since I'm the best brother and boyfriend. Izuku blushed and punched him in the arm while Shouto nodded along. Makes sense. Will you two be sharing a room again? They both paused. They hadn't talked about rooming arrangements yet. Guess we'll find out. Izuku went up the stairs first. The house they had settled on was large, the top floor being all bedrooms and bathrooms while the second floor had a large kitchen with an island and bar, a living room, and even a few side rooms that they planned on using for offices and a guest room for when the others stayed over. There's only six bedrooms, Hitoshi shouted, I called dibs on this one. The rooms were connected by the hall, three on one side and three across with two bathrooms further down the hall. Cheater. You tried to push me down the stairs, Shouto watched them go back and forth before walking to the one next to Hitoshi. I'll take this one. What if I wanted that one? He only shrugged as Himiko groaned. Fine, I'll take this one then. She chose the one across from Hitoshi, leaving the one at the end of the hall next to Shouto and the two next to Himiko. Guess we'll take the one at the end of the hall. The house has been segregated by gender. Izuku rolled his eyes as Dabai started an argument with Himiko. Today we'll be doing the written tests. Aizawa handed him a few packets, all of them with the different subjects, and some with ones Yua definitely didn't have classes for. The first parts are everything in the normal curriculum. The rest of the packet is to base how far ahead you are so don't be scared to leave anything blank. The extra packets are things Nedzu wanted to test you on. Right? Is there anything else? Not today, tomorrow you'll be doing the physical exam, and before anyone tells you, you'll be doing a different test than the other classes. While they'll be fighting robots or the test to move to this class, you'll be doing a more extensive test. That doesn't make me nervous at all. Izuku mumbled as he ducked his head down. You'll be fine, Aizawa ruffled his hair, now get started. I feel like my head melted out of my brain, Slamming his head against the wall, Suzuki started laughing at him. I'm sure you did fine. What if I didn't though? Izuku sunk to the floor with a frown. They all really want me to do good and be this smart and amazing person. But what if I'm not that? What if they were reading too much into it? Or I answered all the questions wrong out of nervousness? Or Suzuki put a hand over his mouth. Izuku, you are my best friend and you can think I'm biased all you want. But I know you. You are a smart and amazing person, and I know that because the first day we met you treated me like a person, and even stood up for me when you wouldn't stand up for yourself. I know you're amazing because you held up a building to save me and someone who treated you like SHT. I know you're smart because you've built everything you've ever needed, because you made plans for us to win in the sport festival. She grabbed him by the shoulders, I also know you're going to be an even better hero than All Might because you are kind along with all those other things. You've seen and been through so much that would have turned most people villain, but you kept being kind. That's how I know you passed. By the end of the speech Izuku was crying. T thank you, he pulled Suzuki into a hug as she rubbed his back. You're welcome. Now let's eat. Internship chat. Maruko, kid I heard you got testing today. Daybreak, haha yeah, I'm a little nervous since Aizawa sensei said my test would be different from the others. Hawks, as my antenna you'll clearly pass with flying colors and if you don't I will find you. Daybreak, ah uh, okay. Maruko, Jesus Christ. Hawks, what? He's awesome he'll pass no problem. Daybreak, thanks Hawks, I'll let you guys know how I do. Hawks. Afterwards we should get food to celebrate, there is no what you want pass. Maruko, dude turn on autocorrect for the love of God. Hawks, no three. Midoriya Hamura household. 
Vet, good luck today, Izuku. 3-3. Three, three. Rabbit, thanks, Mom. 3. Panda, kick butt or I'm locking you out of the house. Feral Cat, he'll do amazing. Good luck, Izuku. Bat, yeah, good luck. Eat your enemies. Rabbit, I'm not gonna eat anyone. Penguin, you'll do good, Izuku. Rabbit, thank you, Ray. Normal Cat, why are we wishing him luck? Feral Cat, he has his physical tests at Yua today. Normal Cat, ah, uh, okay, good luck, Izuku. Rabbit, thanks, Shouto. Dove, best of luck. My students also wish you luck. Rabbit, Awa, thanks, Fayumi. Tell the little ones I said thank you. Dog, good luck, man. Rabbit, thanks, Natsuo. This house is a nightmare. Skin Stealer, everyone wish my brother luck or my name becomes real. Electric Boogaloo, we were gonna do that anyway, but good luck, Izuku. Spider Tapeman, you'll do great, senpai. Ultra Strawberry Dreams, let's go ooh -oo kick Izuku. Ultra Red, you'll be the manliest out there. Baku, if you don't win, it'll kill you, Deku. Zero Ultra, we already wished him luck. Do we have to do it again? Possum, you don't gotta but Suzuki keeps beach at me, so I'm adding her here. Vampy Beach, yes, my new best friend. Robin Hood, she was my best friend first. Vampy Beach, we can share. Possum has added Suzuki Himari. Suzuki Himari has changed their name to Snack. Snack, best of luck to the Midorias because you both have testing. Robin Hood, Himiko, you have testing. Vampy Beach, not till later. Skin Stealer, everyone say good luck to my sister or my name becomes real. Izuku stood in his hero costume in front of the training ground anxiously. He was tugging and twisting his fingers as he waited for the time to start. Stop that problem, child. He took a deep breath and let his hands go. Why are you so nervous now? You seemed anxious yesterday, but this is worse. I, it's just everyone wants me to do great, but what if I fail? He looked to Aizawa who sighed before crouching in front of him. Let's get one thing straight. They want you to do great because you've been working for it and you deserve to be great. Second, if you don't do great, that doesn't mean you failed. It means you need to work harder. You can't fail this test, all right? We don't run things here like that. I don't run things like that. Right, right. He shook his hands out before nodding. I got this. If I don't do great, I didn't fail. Exactly. We already know you're ahead due to the one-on-one -on -one training and outside training. That's why this is set up differently. You'll do fine at worst and great at best got it. Got it, sensei. Good, now go. Izuku jumped a bit but took off running into the training ground. They had explained to him that he would be simulating a normal patrol for a hero with added difficulties and fights to really test him. Nedzu would be watching through the cameras the whole time. The entire area looked like the city at night, large and small buildings littering everywhere with roads and allies cutting through. Even the sky looked dark. They had given him a general route to take, but made it clear that if he felt the need to go off route it wouldn't count against him as long as he had a reason. For a few moments nothing happened, but then he heard a scream, one that sounded strangely like present Mike. He SWCH his visor to thermal so he could find the hero easier, but looking closer he could see another figure approaching him. Are they simulating a mugging? When he made it to the alley, it was pretty clear that that was what they were doing. Present Mike dressed in casual clothes while Snipe waved a gun around and pretended to threaten the man. He really wanted to laugh at the scene, but he couldn't since this was a test. Taking a moment to fully observe them, he turned his visor normal before using his capture weapon to wrap around Snipe's wrist. When the hero let off a shot, he moved to the side before wrapping his other capture weapon around the man and slamming him to the ground. Once he was secure, Izuku pulled out a par of cuffs and hooked him one of the pipes. Sorry, Snipe Sensei, he whispered, getting a thumbs up from the man. Uh, are you all right, sir? Present Mike pretended to cry as he grabbed Izuku's arm. My hero, thank you so much. Izuku giggled a little as the blonde pretended to be in more distress. What should I do now? 
C. Call the police and stay away from the villain, please. Of course, Hiro. Izuku laughed a little louder before waving and leaving the alley. How do you think your student will do, Eraser? Nedzu asked as they watched Izuku stop another mugging and help the civilian. He'll pass with flying colors. Oh, it seemed like you thought otherwise when you were talking to him. Of course you were watching us, Aizawa sighed while the principal laughed. Kids got enough people in his life assuring him that he'll do amazing. He needed someone who just assured him he wouldn't fail. They watched as Izuku dropped down in front of the bank. I've trained him strong and he has the potential to be an amazing hero. He'll pass. After the first few muggings he had gotten suspicious. While he didn't doubt that he would be dealing with a lot of muggings since he would work at night mostly. He also knew he could be dealing with worse. They had lived in a bad part of the neighborhood for a while, and he had seen some of the bad things. He knew there would be more than muggings. A bank robbery was interesting though. Turning on Thermal he looked around the building and saw three people inside with one near a hidden car. I should take the getaway driver first, then slip inside. He went to the back of the building and waited before dropping down on the person. He didn't waste any time and simply handcuffed them before taping their mouth shut. Though he paused when he recognized the person as Haya, a friend of Nejair. It's the big three, isn't it? The girl only shrugged a little, oh boy. He looked in the building and tried to guess who was who. They all had good control over their quirks thanks to their training and work studies, but he could work around them if he did this right. Gotta take out Hotto first. He went to the top of the building and opened a vent, slipping in and using his capture weapon to safely get him inside. This is so exciting. We get to help Midoriya with his test. I know, right? What do you think he'll do? I think he'll go for the front. Both of you are too excited for this. Mirio and Nejire were talking in excited whispers while Tamaki was leaning against the wall. It left Tamaki open. While his original plan was to take out Nejire first, if he could get Tamaki out first it would still be a big help. But it would also let the other two know he was there and they would attack right after. He tapped his mask, letting the gas mask and visor light up a little. If they knew where he was he might as well try throwing them off. Taking his gun out he loaded the electrical charges and aimed at Tamaki. It wouldn't hurt the other student to bad, but it would knock him out. Tamaki, he kicked the vent open and threw down a smoke bomb. It would still let them see the glowing parts of his mask, but he was hoping they would aim for them, good thinking Midoriya, but we can still track you with your mask. You're so sneaky, I love it. He dodged the energy pulses sent by Nejire and kept track of where Mirio was. As soon as the upperclassmen went to the ground he would have to move around so he wouldn't know where Izuku was. Dodging the two was difficult. With every attack the smoke would clear a little more and once it was gone Izuku threw another one down and took of his mask. Why are you standing still? He smirked when Nejire and Mirio attacked the mask and visor. I wasn't. He shot Nejire in the back, knocking her out and placing her next to Tamaki. Smart thinking Midoriya. Mirio walked up and offered his hands. As a bank robber I am too scared to face you and will be turning myself in. Izuku stared at him and cautiously put him in cuffs. But the other teen never moved. Only sitting next to his friends as Haya was brought in by a fake police officer. Thank you so much hero, we'll take it from here. Izuku tried not to laugh as Midnight came in with a fake mustache in a Halloween-looking cop costume. All right, he quickly left and went back to the route. Let's review Midoriya. Nedzu changed the screens to show the multiple crimes Izuku had stopped as well as a few times when he had talked to the police or even reporters to explain the situation. You handled all crimes very well. You could have talked to the police and reporters more, but we can work on that. You also stopped the bank robbery and never let your guard down around Tagata. The principal wrote a few things down before smiling. You passed with flying colors. Really? Izuku was crying as he shouted, I did good. You did great, kid. Aizawa ruffled his hair a bit, almost falling over when the student tackled him into a hug. All right, calm down. 
but he didn't push Izuku away as the student cried. I believe this means we can move forward without plans. Nezu clapped his hands and got Izuku's attention. You have also passed all written exams, even for the classes we don't teach which is fantastic. Nezu laughed evilly, Midoriya Izuku. For the next semester you will be taking more advanced classes and training which will put you further ahead than any of your schoolmates. I believe by the end of next semester you will no longer have to take the curriculum. What? Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through What If Deku Was Class 1A's Senior? I hope you found it as intriguing and thought-provoking as we did. A big shout-out to Jace underscore is underscore dead for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on Archive of Our Own for more amazing works the link is in the description below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to What If Deku 2.0 for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. See you guys in the next video.